Good evening. The theme we are discussing today is uh, reimagining Tamil Nadu, but as has been mentioned, we may roam a little more widely uh, towards various issues and so on. Uh, and uh, so, uh, Kamal, uh, we'll start with your uh, film career already, as we already mentioned, six, 60 years, uh, 220 films in several languages, Tamil, Hindi, uh, Telugu, Malayalam, and one without any language. Uh, push work. <laughs> Good evening, everybody. Thank you. And uh, you are a highly respected actor, an actor's actor, also with a large following. But one thing I've heard, you, you know my knowledge of films is rather limited. <laughs> but one thing I've heard, and uh, it's clear, that's, why, that's a perception widely shared is, in your film roles, you've done a variety of roles, but you're one of those who did not seek to construct an image uh, directed towards a political future. You took on many roles, and not, uh, not just those roles would, which would make you look like a virtuous politician in the making. Does that mean you never entertained the idea of uh, politics um, while doing all these roles? Thank you. But I have this dubious distinction of being uh, Mr. Ram's guide to cinema. <laughs> <laughs> he knows so many things about so many uh, subjects, but this is one subject where uh, I feel proud and not inferior at all. <laughs> so I, starting there, let me tell you, you asked me whether I don't have intentions at all. What was my attitude? Did, I, did my films evade politics and why I didn't create an image? Uh, what I abhorred was the cliché. So even if I had aims of going into politics, I was not going to do it the regular way. Yeah, so, I, without I, naming a, names, we know people who may have done some roles, but suddenly... Yeah, if, even my choice of roles have been like that. So I do believe in the oblique attack. <laughs> Your film, Hey Ram, one of the most uh, significant films made in India, what, uh, what motivated you to do that uh, thing? Almost you can say that I stepped into politics with that film. I mean, yeah. it is not my business to make a film like that. I was just to make films which will make people happy. I mean, uh, I suddenly wanted to include protein in the diet instead of masala. And uh, I thought it was time. I, I had this apprehension that we will reach today. Uh, I was even worried that we'll, we'll reach this day earlier. So that prompted me to make that film at the end of the millennium, 1999, uh, to make a, step, a fresh start in my life also. So it's a very strong political film. If you see it now, it makes more sense to people. It made sense to me then, not that I was ahead of time. I've just about in time in making that film. Today, making that film will be difficult. Yeah, we... Yes, that's precisely the point. Why is India relapsed in that sense? Because that film has a grievous personal loss. Somebody who's angry, seeks revenge, wants to assassinate the Mahatma, find some... and then it's turned back and uh, espouses uh, Gandhism. But why is it that uh, after so many lessons have been learned and so many setbacks suffered by India, secular India, democratic India, we are now returning to perhaps the most difficult, challenging phase in, uh, I wouldn't say since independence because we've had other problems, but in recent decades. Uh, politics of hate, divisiveness, goons breaking into a university with yes. mast. So what I, I think it's like a body and muscle. If you, you have to keep exercising ethics and social consciousness constantly, otherwise we tend to regress back. Just shutting down electricity in a Big Apple in America brought the worst of behavior in, in a 
classy society we, we all aspire to become. I think it's a constant vigil that we have to keep. Uh, that's what I keep saying, that democracy is not infallible. We have to constantly be on the yeah. vigil. Otherwise, it is only through democracy uh, a person like Hitler was able to seize power. So we have to keep awake and uh, we have to keep these dialogues and questions and ask them aloud and also uh, assess our situation, look around and see what has happened to us. And are we progressing or regressing? These are constant questions we'll have to ask. Dr. Ambedkar, among others, warned of the strong man syndrome. Beware of strong, man, strong men, great men, men who are outsized and so on. Uh, is that a problem? Or, or, or simply charismatic leadership? Uh, I think charismatic leadership time is uh, coming to an end. I think we'll have to look for leaders in the people. We'll come to that for Tamil Nadu uh, in a, li a little later. Uh, but, <laughs> <laughs> now, going back to the shaping of your outlook, your worldview, you can say, your father was a remarkable man. Yeah. Tell us a little about, uh, about it. It's a li relatively you know, unknown part of your biography. Yes. Uh, 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 he he tell, told me that his father realized that he had to buy his son clothes when he was seven because somebody pointed it out. <laughs> that man who pointed it out that it's a big boy now, you must get him clothes, he's running around nude. <laughs> so that's the kind of, it's not poverty, but it's not also uh, a big family. The man who pointed out that fact later on became my father's father-in-law. Oh. <laughs> they were friends. So that is the kind of background from which he came, and my father-in-law sort of almost not only took him as a son-in-law, but like a son also. So he educated him. He himself was a lawyer, so put him into the law college. So my father has seen the end of uh, both the spectrums. Uh, he's not, uh, but he has moved with all kinds of people. He's so pragmatic, so. Uh, simple, very humorous, and one uh, quality did not cancel out the other. That you'll, you'll find humor and passion and pragmatism all in one bundle. That, that is why his first son was able to talk rational ideas, read books on um, uh, rationalistic views, and even join the DMK party as an advocate. Yes. While my father was uh, Congressman. As congressman, and uh, he's not just a, a follower of Gandhi, but almost a Bhakt. Now, what did he think of your uh, early interest in films? Uh, did he, normally a family, an educated family would have inhibitions? Very, uh, very strange. Um, I uh, was a late child. He was almost 50 when I was born. So we used to make a joke that uh, they should have actually named me Oops Hassan <laughs> because they didn't expect the child at all. So Charu Hassan, Chandra Hassan, and uh, then 24 years later after Charu Hassan, yes. I was born. So the difference between the first brother and the last brother, 24 years. So, uh, so I think he, he used me as a good uh, guinea pig for his ideas. What he didn't, couldn't do, he taught me music, he, he couldn't sing, and then he wanted an artist in the family, and he said so, much to the chagrin of my brothers who didn't um, subscribe to that kind of thought. But he kept pushing it, and somewhere I think uh, the, the, probably few advices I had here to was this, and it... Uh, Stood me in good A very state. progressive man. Very progressive uh, man. And uh, uh, it sounds like I'm uh, uh, eating the humble pie. We never knew, or I'm pretending, we never knew the casteism, the differences. It's only the world which yeah. taught us, not 
the home. It's usually the other way around when they discreetly instruct the children about what exists around the world. The, uh, now we, let's turn to our state, Tamil Nadu, uh, reimagining Tamil Nadu. Show cause why Tamil Nadu needs to be reimagined, because if you look at the indicators, uh, Tamil Nadu ranks pretty high. Uh, India Today's uh, annual State of, the, State of the State Survey, 2019, Tamil Nadu emerged as the best performing state, big state, best performing big state, looking at all criteria. Uh, and uh, if you look at the Niti Aayog's India Innovation Index, the, the, la the latest released, Tamil Nadu follows Karnataka as the state which is most innovative. Uh, there are areas where uh, it's uh, relatively backward. For example, Niti Aayog School Education Quality Index, Tamil Nadu ranks 8 out of 20, quite, quite low, uh, uh, given its other advantages and so on. So, Oh, and then we have a public dis universal public distribution system. We have fairly efficient governance, it appears. I won't, I will come to the uh, other, uh, other uh, dimension, perhaps uh, number one uh, or number two in India with respect to corruption. But let's... Uh, but, uh, <laughs> no, but uh, when we were given a, a sort of brief on who was going to come here and what they would like, this conversation to be. They said, don't forget to add humor in it. <laughs> and uh, Mr. Ram said, it seems, uh, don't expect humor from me, but do expect wit. But yeah, I think he has offered the humor part. <laughs> <laughs> so I think, uh, what else can we do? It's, it, it's not even a loud laughter, but it's a sad smirk, is what I can give uh, for this kind of a joke. Why it has to be reimagined, first we have to imagine, we have lost our imagination. And uh, there's nothing to be invented, we just have to discover what we are, the synergy that we can produce, this room can produce. We have lost that imagination, so we have to bring that forth. I mean, this hibernation, <laughs> we'll have to stop. When we Us, I'm, I'm not blaming politicians anymore because we know who we are and who they are. And we now have to realize who we are. But if this is the state of the, perhaps one of the most advanced states, what about the rest? Yeah, that's, that's why this joke is on the country. Yeah. It's a shame on the country if this is the standard. That, that means we are celebrating mediocrity and even low. We are trying to raise mediocrity as the highest level. And that's, that's a shame on the country would produce great men, including those in this room. So it's, it's such an insult to us. We must take umbrage. What explains the dominance of uh, the Dravidian movement in its various avatars, offshoots and so on? Uh, in this state, and why did the so-called national parties, I use the word so-called advisedly, because that's their claim. <laughs> uh, but what, what do you think explains this? Because now you are uh, entered politics, you have done your homework. I, I think that uh, the Dra Dravidian movement, you know the history, I mean, most of us know. What, uh, in Tamil, we say it's Kalatin Katayam, need of the hour. Yeah. If Mr. Anadura has not been born, Mr. Periyar was not there, there still would have been a moment. We don't know when it would have uh, borne fruit, but it was need of the hour, yes. because it was not an inclusive politics. It was an exclusive politics, so they, people were left out and they gathered together and they formed, and they found a small percentage, like it happens around the world, even in uh, fiscal matters, 2% control, the rest. So they wanted to change it. So it was a need of the hour. That's why my brother, born to a congressman, joined DMK. It was a need of the hour. Uh, I mean, it doesn't matter. Personalities didn't matter. And uh, I think 
there is a, I spoke once and I, I speak again in another great forum. I think um, Murasuli function I spoke. You cannot remove Dravidam from uh, the map. The reason is that the so-called, uh, it's pan-Indian, pan-national, this uh, Dravidianism as we call it. I mean, archaeologists will give me better reason and support as to why I say it. So this is just a, a, a brand, a, a name, a umbrella under which we can sit. It will be there. Who takes it forward and uh, who, uh, it's not even leading, it's taking it towards the right destination. And that's what it'll be. So when they say, they, will you also lead the, uh, dra tread the Dravidian path? There is no, it's a Dravidian terrain. Path has to be made by us. So that's what I think, um, you, you cannot erase it. And I, my intention is not to change that but to change this corrupt alternatives that we have. That has to change. We must have, like uh, Edward de Bono says, you cannot live a life with just yes and no. If there is no third alternative, invent it. He wrote a book called Yes, No, and Po. <laughs> so he invented a word. So I think that's what I am. <laughs> it's a remarkably long-lasting... Uh hegemony. I remember 1967. After that, the so-called national parties never returned with a ghost of a chance of capturing power in uh, Tamil Nadu. They always became uh, B team, or B league or C league members. Congress perhaps B league, BJP D league and so on uh, in Tamil Nadu. Uh, it's a remarkably long innings for these parties, despite the splits and the various controversies. Whether deserving is or not is another question. Uh, uh, the thing is, I said they were the need of the hour. Then the need of the hour just became need. <laughs> Their need. Yes. And uh, that was systemized. And now corruption is... Uh, there's a parallel government which can... Uh, which runs only for corruption. Governance of corruption. We'll come to that in a minute, but before that, when I was in school, high school and college, there was a very strong anti-Hindi movement. Unlike you, I, I can't speak Hindi, <laughs> more than a couple of words. Uh, so what, what should be our approach to uh, this, uh, what, what, can, what is called linguistic what, what shall we call it? Linguistic chauvinism or linguistic... Uh, See, like... Uh, exclusivism, yeah, whatever. I never understood what people meant when they said horse sense. Uh, sure. My vice president here is an expert on horses, so he'll enjoy this. Uh, uh, horses around the world, if you know one horse, you know any horse in the world. You'll be able to sit on it and communicate with it. We don't have that kind of a general communication. We have somehow declined the great offer which was there in front of us, and we have become chauvinists for language. It's a beautiful uh, badge to wear, but the world will move more and more towards uh, borderless, languageless communion. And uh, I was part of the Hindi agitation. Tamar told me that you'll get more holidays <laughs> if you participate in it. That was the only reason I, I didn't even understand. But later, as I grew, I understood there was a reason behind it. The promise that we Indians were given when we became independent was slowly being denied by yes. a monoculture, which uh, even now the argument continues. When uh, Anna said, uh, I, re I sort of rephrase my words and retreat, but the reason remains, he said. For the reason for the agitation remains, but we take back the agitation. 
So would you say that in your wide interactions with people in Tamil Nadu, you've been all over touring and interacting with them at a personal level, uh, do, you, do you see any anti-Hindi sentiment or is it just the resentment against what is seen as uh, an un unjust place given to Hindi, whereas not treating other national languages equally? No. Uh, what do you see? No, let me start with introspection rather than inspecting them. Yeah. I, like you, didn't know Hindi till I was 26, 27. Yeah. I really didn't know. Yeah, few uh, North Indian friends uh, used cuss words, so I knew the meaning of them. Yeah. That's all was my vocabulary in Hindi. And suddenly when an opportunity came about, I learned Hindi willingly. I think that will be the feeling of any Tamilian. His language, his mother tongue, will be Tamil, and he will seek to learn Chinese, Hindi, Marathi, French, what suits him, or what uh, 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 he takes a fancy to. That's how it should be. It cannot be forced on them. How long will it take the chap sitting in Delhi to realize this? From a second to a century. <laughs> <laughs> now, coming to one of the key subjects, corruption. Now, in Tamil Nadu, it's well understood. In Tamil Nadu, the, the term scientific corruption was, was used to describe the system of corruption in Tamil Nadu. It's an extremely systematized system with rules, rates are fixed, incentives are provided for various sectors. There's a distribution mechanism, you know, the lowest, uh, with one, uh, one strong leader, the lower rungs got a smaller share. Now it's more decentralized, I believe, uh, and so on. Uh, and then there are sectors like uh, mining, sand mining, beach sand mining, river sand mining, beach sand mining uh, for minerals, uh, granite quarrying. At every level, this, uh, this system of what can be only be called grand corruption, yes. which uh, is operative and it is well recognized. There's a literature on it, even I've written on it and various others. Uh, now, some scholars point out that coexist side by side with this system of grand corruption in Tamil Nadu, for which Tamil Nadu has evolved a long way, uh, you have uh, a fairly efficient delivery mechanism, system of delivery, delivering welfare goods. For example, the public distribution system. For example, the uh, rural employment guarantee scheme where everyone takes a cut, but that seems to facilitate wider reach. There's an incentive to enroll more people. This is, this is serious literature findings. So show cause why corruption is bad. If corruption helps people, uh, why, why is corruption intrinsically bad if it facilitates uh, the delivery of uh, welfare goods and services? See, the instant gratification of corruption is so inviting. Yeah. So it's very difficult to argue on the long-term yeah. basis. We think of Rome as a great place, but they say that during the time of uh, Marius, uh, when he was a di dictator, that the streets of Rome was compacted by uh, garbage dumped by the citizens. People were walking in such stink. Europe used to stink, even after the demise of the decline and fall of the Roman Empire. And the perfumes became a necessity only because of that. That's how bad it was. But in the long term, they realized, like instant gratification, there's a sudden realization that comes with the Black Plague. Then it was a great equalizer. But I hope that we will not wait for that black plague, either economically or any which way that will hit us. We'll have to, uh, that is what we'll have to imagine now, before it's too late. And that is what I called imagining the worst. Accidents waiting to happen can be averted. And uh, why corruption is so 
convincing is because it, it's a quick fix. And the, the man who uh, puts out his hand for the money for vote actually doesn't know that it's his money that is being recycled. How do you make him understand that? Even if you do, he, he says, yes, I do understand, but what do I do today? So you have to really show him the benefits. So next time when a politician goes to offer him money for votes, he'll put his price up and they won't be able to afford it because ultimately they are businessmen. They are not philanthropists, nor uh, socially conscious people. They are here to loot. And if it's not worthwhile, they won't do it. They'll stop. But there will always be some who will take the, the, the what's left over, the, a thousand rupees or two thousand rupees. But why is it that Tamil Nadu specializes in this, along with perhaps Andhra Pradesh and Karnataka? And some of the so-called backward Hindi-speaking states don't seem to face the same kind of uh, prob problem, certainly not on this scale. <laughs> Hard one. We, no, 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 not at all, because we are very intelligent. But we have diverted it to another, this great faculty has been diverted in the wrong direction. So the right and wrong balance is a check and balance we'll have to continuously keep making. And uh, my mother used to say that uh, when I have an idea which is very wicked or crooked, that is the side word. <laughs> so, uh, it, we have used that great intelligence, collective intelligence, to go towards a, uh, this easy way. And uh, no pain, no gain. We'll have to grit our teeth and uh, go towards a direction. And we can. We taught them how to wash their hands, clean their clothes, not to litter. It just can be done. And they've forgotten it all. Is, one, is, one, one of, is that one of your main activities? Uh, yes, uh, on, even on the ground. before I publicly proclaimed that I'm coming into politics, these things we were attempting, but without seizing power, you cannot instill that as a rule of life. And I'm not talking about dictatorship, I'm just talking about a benevolent politician who should sit there. And that's why when my... Um, uh, Film fraternity wanted to stop the cricket match. I said, uh, 20 people are playing a, a game which you don't like. Just walk another mile. 234 players are playing a very bad game inside the fort. <laughs> stop them. <laughs> You're wasting your time on the wrong arena. <laughs> I said. And that's what we should do. And uh, the time, that's why I am here. Your uh, political movement, the way you started, was somewhat unconventional. That you, you were not, you didn't call yourself the supremo, uh, although you are the clearly unmistakable leader of that movement, because you, you, you're the one who brought them together. But uh, what made you decide at that point of time, I will jump into this? It is, a, it is an adventure for you. No, uh, as I told you, yeah. that jump was done even during Heram. Hmm? Heram, the film. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's a phenomenal risk yeah. to take. But let me tell you that that's one film which got me table profit. I, I did not do that film for that at all. I said, come what may, I will make the statement because there will be a time when you cannot make it. Yes. Because uh, it, it's a, what is happening to our country has happened before. It's nothing new. It's a facsimile and a bad smudged facsimile of what happened in Europe. And uh, we all remember it and we are letting it happen all over again. And we are players in it. Even in the corruption, it's the, we are talking because we are now talking about reimagining Imagine that we all have a hand in that corruption because of not looking in that direction. 
uh, in Tamil I said before when uh, in an interview I said before when you say thief, thief and run behind one uh, criminal he runs very fast to get away from the crowd today he stops and said did you call for me I hear so many people screaming what do you want so that's the arrogance we have given him he needn't be scared uh, the punitive measures that we have put in place are not punishments enough. Yes. I can shop my way out of it. Literally, go shopping. <laughs> there, have been, there has been a considerable history of people who did very well in films, very talented people, who were very popular, who were admired for some the roles they played, for the character or whatever who entered politics, some succeeded big time, others flopped. Let's not go into names, but what are the ingredients? Have you learned uh, uh, any, do you, can you draw any conclusions from this fairly significant body of experience in Tamil Nadu? And also if, if you want Andhra Pradesh by extension. It, it, there's a lot to learn. I mean, uh, the thousand one ways of how not to do it. Yeah. Uh, but. Like, what I pursue is a dangerous strategy, and they cannot afford it. My weapon is very sharp. I intend to be very honest. And that is something they cannot, the, the, the astra to challenge my, they don't have. It, it is nothing new that I'm saying. They ask Gandhiji, what is going to be your political strategy? He said, honesty. I, I, I sort of made, diluted it a little more for my understanding. So that is what our party is all about. When you said you placed yourself, I placed myself in a position of pride. I am the platform. So stand on me and implement the ideas. So it, it's, it's not a mean position. It's a great position. And that's how I see myself as. And that's why my party uh, will be led by leaders, not by me. Now, I know you well enough to say that when you come to a conclusion, you will stay with it. Regardless, you, you will be very stubborn. <laughs> it will be hard for you to pull back. But then you must have advisors who will always caution, be cautious, don't go this, this is the perception, that's the perception. So moderate your views. All my successful films that I have produced in Raj Kamal were first vetoed by my advisors. Yes. But later on, I had to argue, the more I argue and try to convince them, I become convinced. It's not stubbornness, it's a question of strengthening yourself with repetitive action, your muscle becomes stronger your mental strength increases. And that's what I did. There were naysayers. Even to start a party, yeah. there were negative things. In the party, there'll be negative. Uh, but finally, we all, trying to convince them, also convinces me, which gives me great strength. And my strength sort of permeates and becomes infectious. In film, so, so in politics. Yes? Yes. That's, that's what I am about. The second simile was about my political party, our political party. And uh, I, 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 I enjoy it. A little more than films, which to my surprise. Even my, <laughs> even my film fraternity is quite surprised that uh, yes, we will be happier. We thought we will be a sad looking man when you get into politics. You'll have a frown. I have a smile instead. At least inside, <laughs> I feel a brilliant light inside me. Could you give us some idea of the kind of uh, uh, caution they advocate uh, in relation to perceptions out there that you are this or that and how you handle that uh, when you come into the political arena, not films? any arena, you must assert yourself, go that route, and if you're proven wrong, 
be ready to take responsibility and say you're sorry but i'll take the right route again i i have seen examples great examples in gandhi ji and i have seen examples of not believing in something but then for the good of the country help the man do something which is going in the right direction ambedkar is a great example yes where he disagreed with gandhi ji but when it came for to writing the constitution and he was given the responsibility he obeyed like like a slave <laughs> Sla- yes. literally worked for a day and night and that's the attitude which brings me to uh, something perhaps close your great friend rajnikanth yeah uh, and uh, he has other ideas maybe we don't know quite where but he's not taken this uh, this path but recently there was a function where uh, there was a lot of uh, fraternity although no clear political outcome from there would you like to take this audience i don't want to create any news or controversy no no Just, uh, <laughs> please do <laughs> <laughs> see it it's a question of the reason why i am here sir is to convince you likewise i will try to convince my friend as as well <laughs> and uh, i will want him to uh, help tamil nadu because tamil nadu has helped him so i i want all of us to invest in tamil nadu whatever means that you have and he is very proudly a tamilian now wherever he is born and he should invest that's what i'll try to convince him with and he is of that mindset many times we have agreed to disagree so it's our style our choice of films and my love for cinema is different to the love he has for cinema so how, did, how did you maintain this good relationship Hey, it was decided we <laughs> agreed on one point that we'll set an example and uh, i am quite surprised that these guys who have not even reached 30 both of us yeah. made that decision that we are going to be the next after those two big guys so we better pr- be deserving of that position and uh, we made the decision that we will not Uh, allow any small squabbles to uh, be disagreements will be will do in public and announce those very uh, nicely gently yeah that bell reminds me that we have 5 minutes yeah for me uh, in this conversation and then there'll be some time for questions maybe 10 minutes or so your party program what are the key issues that uh, Uh, that you're going to work on i know women's safety is one yes yeah. see uh, uh, i'll talk about women uh, because uh, empowering women is one word that confuses me women are empowered they know the strength to quote from mythology it is like convincing hanuman to cross the sea they don't know why they are being like that is something it's a longer book to <laughs> write it could create great literature we will work and as i said in our party program we think from space to the paddy fields women should get equality wages to begin with i don't see why man is paid more than women in every there are very few industries so do we have somebody here who tries to equalize that but it should become the order of the day uh, mrs uma devi is when i told her this she said no not in my factory that's uma devi so i mean we should have more of those people and it should go into the agrarian field as well as in space and they need not ask they know how to run all houses are run by women like it's a old joke where the husband says i run the house and i have my wife's permission to say so 
So that's how all households are run. They are empowered, they must understand it, and we don't need to translate it to them. We just have to remind them, because they're, they're too busy making homes, they don't know that they need just a little uh, suggestion to empower them. And we will do that. Unemployment is something we won't crib about, but do something about skill set, according to us, is a great solution, one great solution. Because this monoculture of creating lakhs and lakhs of uh, lawyers and uh, engineers, engineers and, uh, it'll end up being that engineers will be willing to drive cars for you, take uh, the garden shears or the hair cutting scissors, because it's paying more. And it's true. And uh, finally, a, 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 a hair stylist in a metropolitan city like this can easily earn uh, from 50,000 to 1 lakh a month. That's the truth, because out of 7.5 crores, even ladies trim their hair now. That includes those with the male pattern alopecia. <laughs> they, they still need a, a haircut. So that's a great opportunity. This uh, infra dig about profession should stop and we will propagate that. Dignity of labor. Dignity of labor. You, you said earlier. Yeah, yeah that it must be inculcated when we will do it. And, uh, and our agrarian society, there's a friend of mine who said, if you find gold and diamonds underneath and over the ground, if it is... Uh, uh, agriculture going on, do not m meddle with that. You can't eat gold and diamonds. Yeah. So we will take care of uh, agriculture and use new implements. The farmer has to be, uh, once again like the ladies, he has to be empowered into believing that it could be a lucrative business. To, it's our duty to make uh, agriculture a lucrative business, which we are not. We are, we turned our face away from it. And education is another part we'll have to take seriously and not take these uh, little pats on the shoulder from the center <laughs> <laughs> where we believe that we are good. It's, uh, it's a myth and we will not go. So on, on that note, we'll uh, turn it over for questions from... I believe there were questions that came online. As That's well. right. So we have four or five questions that came online, and then we'll also open it out. We did invite a few questions. I'm sorry, many of you did not give your last names, so I'm going to identify you as you did. Uh, Abhishek, ADMK Chennai Central Youth Secretary, is, I think, in the audience. Abhishek, would you... We'll get a mic to you. Okay, sure. Hello, sir. Okay, we'll get a mic that works to you. Good evening. Yeah. That side, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Good evening, sir. Tamilian Kerala. Kandipa Kerala. Good evening, sir. Uh, uh, good evening, Ram sir as well. Uh, my name is Abhishek Rangasamy. I am a first generation entrepreneur. Could you please come here? Because sure, sure. Uh, I'd also like to read lips. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I'm a first generation entrepreneur and a politician as well. Uh, I started uh, my political career when I was at the age of 18. Uh, that is because there was no politician from my entire family. So I wanted to do that uh, and my parents supported it as well. Now I'm uh, 30 years old. I'm the current uh, Deputy Secretary for South Chennai uh, Youth Wing, AADMK. I handle around uh, 600 youth clubs. Okay, apart from that, um, the vision towards uh, to give back to the society was always in my mind. And um, you have been always a great inspiration to me, sir. Even uh, during my college days, uh, there were comments thrown on me. Ah, you'd be a Because once when I tried to play guitar and drums together, like how sad did. Ah, you'd be a Like that, you have always been an inspiration to me. So when I joined politics, you were not there. And now, since you are into politics, what will be your step towards inspiring people like me? Uh, like like uh, when we joined, you were not there. But now there's an opportunity. But I'm very much happy and most proud to be in my party. There, there has been very good reforms which have been discussed to us by, by our seniors. Shall, and we, have been shall very we stay with the question? So that the yeah, 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 time. yeah. So um, but the question is very simple. W what is your step towards inspiring young politicians like me who are waiting for a very good opportunity to give back to the society? To inspire someone like you, yes. let's yes. say. 
let's start with person to person chain velu naikar mari nallavana kettavana nu ketta theriyilaya pa neenga badhal solliter irukka mudiyad you will have to decide you have to do it from the right side i don't mean the political right i from the right side on the contrary um <laughs> on the contrary no i am openly co- <laughs> saying that you should come to us <laughs> sure sure um, the, that that is uh, th- there is no hide and seek sir i don't want uh, the the power of youth to be frittered away unite come to one direction you can do it right away if you want <laughs> <laughs> now we wouldn't like to embarrass you go back the same parents who advised you that it's good to go into service of the people will again give you the right advice but it should you should decide what is right and wrong and not say like velana ikar nallavana kettavalana theriyilaya pa nu solla kudadu you must know and it's very simple sir the answer is very simple if there has been one or two reforms what do you want to do it, sir immediately right away when uh, you have been chosen as a leader the immediate reform what do you want to do to the to the society for youngsters i will lead by example that's the first reform that the other person in my party should feel that i cannot do this because this man is not doing it and it will have to permeate it sounds like utopia it is not you see my film sets as compared to other film sets mine will have a little more discipline no not a little more a lot more discipline than other sets you won't hear the cacophony of human voices there'll be a lot of silence and only pertinent people will raise their voice that can be done and uh, i need everybody's help to do it they ask me we are not a politician how will you do it? that's the very reason why i will win next please next uh, mr balachandran from the ias i think we'll get a mic to you yeah, yeah. it works also okay yeah. thank you good evening assalam good evening sir i am impressed with what you do do we, speak we can't into hear the you. mic we yeah. can't hear you is yeah. it okay that way speak into the you know hold it yeah okay yes ah. yeah uh, mr khasan i am impressed with uh, what you said that um, um, you will be an honest uh, politician it's very important i was born in tamil nadu i am a tamil i was president of delhi tamil sangam i am lifetime honorary president of calcutta tamil mandram despite the fact that for 35 years i lived outside tamil nadu the society has given a lot to me the michael and michael flow the society has given a lot to me and i should give back to the society now when you say that you want honesty to be an uncompromising principle in real life when if you were to become cm of tamil nadu certainly that chair is not what shankar and arjun showed it's much more complex it's not sufficient to have an idea though the idea is where from where everything should start like one of the tamil poets said in the nattil tannir pallangalai yemaatchi vittu meedugalai nokkiye paindu kondirukkirathu it's a fact when you decide to be honest do you have an action plan how to ensure that honesty in the system because that's much more important okay brutally honesty sometimes has to be brutal but i don't mean blood and gore or punitive measures simply tell them that you have to be honest or clear in the field for others who are honest and if you ask me whether it's possible i tried it in my film i am the only actor probably few barring a few others maybe in india i don't know who pays his taxes i don't touch black money they said you are a fool you can never ever succeed in this business i am still there standing and uh, this is one such example there are many in my field which may be too technical for you this crowd to understand but it is possible sir and uh, people like you will have to give me 
advice on how to systemize it. When they can make systemize corruption, we can systemize honesty as well. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Latha, uh, president of the IIT Alumni Association. Latha, uh, can we get a mic to you, please? Yeah. Hello. I yeah. It's working. Yeah, good evening. I'm uh, Lata Venkat, uh, the executive director of the IIT Madras Alumni Association. Good evening. Uh, so uh, it's very interesting that you started, uh, you know, when we spoke about reimagining the state to talk about women and youth. So uh, we, we spoke about empowering them. So what is the ecosystem that we are really looking and what is the support uh, for women and youth to join your party so that we feel more empowered? Welcome. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> That's the first support that we can tell you. Please do come. And uh, we need, you need to populate Makkaldi uh, Nimayam with your kind. So please, that is the first request from our side. And ideas, I'm, I've not come here with the full answers. We are still work in progress. You can add to it. So invest in Tamil Nadu. Reimagining is also reinvesting into Tamil Nadu. So invest into Tamil Nadu. And uh, let me tell you, these set of politicians are not going to be wanting to be partners in your business. They want you to be partners in the glory and wealth of Tamil Nadu. It's the other way around where we are not going to ask for a cut in your business to make it flourish. We want you to do business, that's all. And we'll facilitate it, and Tamil Nadu will become rich. And that's our plan. And the same kind of plan can be uh, implemented with women and their empowerment. You come in here, you give us ideas, disagree with us and agree with us, and we will formulate come and what is now just a nebulous thought will become a solid action and we can go forward with that. So we have women in the party, but that's not enough. So we want to populate the party with more women. I'm used to, uh, I, I was born and brought up in a house full of women and I'm used to seeing women holding the key, literally. So I'm quite comfortable with that idea. So you won't find a chauvinist in <laughs> me and most of the members in our party. Those who are not, we are converting them very fast. <laughs> um, Mr. Sharfuddin, director of Grimson Industries. Okay. Chip. Thank you. Hi. I'm Sharfuddin Sheikh. Director of Crimson Organics, Kadalur. 35 years of oil and gas experience all over the world. This is from me. Hi, Kamal. You're a talented artist, a beautiful artist, and a varied experience and uh, expressions. I've always admired you in my life, Thank possibly you. from my younger hood. Now I see you entered in politics. Having handled so many very good things in your field so far, I think possibly I'll assure you are the most talented person. I was a mentor for me, Mr. Arvind Kejriwal, who is the best chief minister, as I feel. Maybe others are different. I would like to have you as the next chief minister like Arvind. <laughs> now, putting myself in a small peace of mind, and so many entrepreneurs are around me, i like to ask you a small question. What do you think your vision for small, medium or large entrepreneurs and interest list to support you? See, as I told you, my strategy is something others don't have. You will have to support me because I'm going to be honest, which means more profit for you, sir. I'm not going to ask 30% from your to, for you to start a business. The going rate won't be our rate. We will not go that direction. So it's a fantastic 
uh, idea to have a party like this facilitating your business. You will be twice as rich with your business, and so also Tamil Nadu. That is the only, uh, I'm not enticing you with it. I'm promising you that. No, no, yeah, that, that's, yeah, that's, that's offline. Yeah. Our, our next question did not come on the internet, but I do know Suhasini Mani Ratnam is here and she has a question. Suhasini. Oh, is she here? Suhasini. Both of you know my face, but I'll still like to show it. <laughs> hello, Endram, and hello, hello Kamal. Hello, hello. Uh, it was really nice to hear from Kamal about my grandfather and my great-grandfather. And everything he said is true. We never knew about caste till we went out and somebody pointed out our caste. So thank you to our family. My question to Kamal is, um, we are all very proud Tamils. I mean, reading the report India, India Today. But today was a very sad day. I don't know how many of you went out and looked at the ration shops. There were long queues to collect the thousand rupees and I'm truly ashamed. It is not just the poor people who were there, but people who are well off, we're all going. Maybe it's, it's your right to go and take the money. But how are you going to bring in honesty with the seven crore of people, at least six crore of them are like that, ready to take money? Because we run an NGO and uh, there are 350 women. All that we try is tell them not to take money for votes, not to take money for any favors but I don't think we are succeeding. It's very, very difficult to take it out of their system because they say in the next street, they've given 3,000 rupees. For us, they gave only 2,000 rupees. So how is it? How are you going to change the mindset of six crore people who are ready to take money? I don't know. How do you convince uh, anybody not to be uh, a criminal? Because the outcome is not going to be great afterwards. The other solidam, you can say, the moral of a woman, ethics of a man, all that you cannot come up because instant gratification, you cannot argue with it, we will go with it, but then you'll have to convince them that they are being offered peanuts. There is more to come and we can offer you that. You'll have to counter the offer with a better offer they deserve to make them understand it you will have to be the mouthpiece we all have to do that because you start with your household convince them that's the best way to do it the the, the labor should be paid if you increase that the corruption will decrease in his area you'll have to pay him well if we try to, uh, even, uh, uh, there's a song I've written in a Tamil film. You just give that kira kari paisa get But you're not worried about the petrol that, uh, that uh, cost that they've levied on your head. Where the millions, crores are gone down into somebody else's Till, which is duly my money. I will run three Tamil Nadus. That is what you'll have to convince the, the people. You're siphoning off money which is theirs and then making them look like uh, queuing up like beggars. Now, the opposition party created a ruckus. Kamala Hassan and Makali Pichaikara Hilinda Salutar we will not allow our people to go that direction. We will have to convince them, bring them home. Let me, ask, let me ask both of you one question. If you had a powerful film focused sharply on anti-corruption theme, exposing ministers, officials, police, uh, policemen and so on. How will you fare with the board of censors? Uh, again, now they used to be board of censors, then they became the certification board. Yeah. I think slowly they are reasserting their censorship uh, yeah. <laughs> rights. 
and we changed it through the fraternity to made them just a, a certification board. Yes. You have no right to tell us what to tell my people. Don't treat them like children and uh, you just uh, certify it. They agreed, but now they are coming back to the censor portion. It is a vicarious, not oblique attack on us. Thank you. We had this tax-free issue, which is sorted out because of GST. The tax-free that the government, the previous two governments were giving for the film, which was creating a huge problem that was sorted out by GST. Censor is an issue. I would like to add that Heram cannot be made today. That's, that's yeah. exactly and I made Roja it in a hurry and because also I forecasted this day. <laughs> Irvar or Roja or Bombay cannot be made today. It will not pass the census. It's a sad state. Thank you. We have one final question. Um, Arjun Shetty, CEO of Bank Bazaar. Okay, you're here, Arjun. Great. Hello, sir. Uh, enormously proud of all the great work you've done in Tamil cinema. Uh, you know, in your movies, you've made us laugh, you've made us cry, you've made us enormously passionate. Uh, now, when I hear your agenda of women's empowerment, uh, agricultural uh, skill development, uh, uh, it, it is very, very appealing, I think, to uh, uh, the educated, right? But it feels like to win in elections in Tamil Nadu, you need to appeal to the passions. You need to have uh, the same type of slogans that the right uses to energize the masses, right? Uh, when I hear you speak, you're enormously erudite, uh, but you don't e energize the passions when you speak here the way you do in your movies. Do you feel like your communication uh, strategy when you appeal to the masses is, is going to be different? Like, what does it take to win an election in Tamil Nadu? Because it feels like everyone who wins, they appeal to someone's passions deeply. When my movie wins, it's because of the communication. So, the same techniques will be used here. The conversation and my uh, pitching in this audience will be totally different as compared to what I will do in the rural Madurai area. You have not heard it because uh, we don't get the best of exposure in the media as we should have. We can't all start a channel of our own. But then, <laughs> You, sir, could be that uh, ambassador to understand, just at least tune in on certain areas because you cannot totally black us out because uh, the digital media gives us a platform. That is why I went to Big Boss. I don't know whether you watch it, but uh, that is a subcutaneous uh, communication with my voters. And there'll be many to... more, many more. And the slogans, like I told you, you don't expect the cliches from me. The approach won't be cliche. It, it, it'll be different, but it'll, be, it'll do the job. We are working on it, and uh, there's no holding back, or uh, there's nothing infra dig in reaching out and embracing my people. There's nothing uh, less about it, it's more. So I will, if you have a suggestion, if you think, if it's a, don't stop with criticism. Give us a suggestion and we'll take it because we want to go forward and we want to win this. So we, we, we'll do it the right way, not uh, compromise anything, but try to compress all good ideas into one box and then bring it out of the box, literally. <laughs>